In this video, I wanna talk about how I overcame the seven deadly sins of solopreneurship. Specifically, the busy work trap, lack of setting clear goals, misaligned branding, overlooking client quality, underutilizing technology, isolation, and most importantly, imposter syndrome. By the way, if this is our first time meeting, my name is Emmanuel and I am the founder of Square One Group. Really, our mission is to help founders and solopreneurs grow and scale their business using systems. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. And I wanna kick this off with the first deadly sin of solopreneurship, it's the busy work trap. This is something I fell into right at the start and I still find myself from time to time, you know, falling back into this trap. And this is simply not about getting things done. This is most importantly about what you're getting done. You see, in the early days, I end my days feeling like I did a whole bunch of stuff, but it wasn't really feeling like I was getting stuff done. Like I wasn't really moving the needle or getting close to my goals and my business. Then a mentor of mine, a friend of mine, gave me a really great tip to overcome this. He said, start tracking your time. Jot down what you're working on every 15 minutes for the next week and then review the data. And this is where it hit me hard. I tallied up all my tasks and it was all things like replying to emails, scheduling meetings, you know, dealing with customer service requests. Necessary stuff, yes, but not things that I should be focusing my efforts on to really move my business forward. So here's how I broke free from that. I started buying back my time task by task. Automation, it became my best friend for all repetitive tasks. And for everything else that couldn't be automated, I would lean into VAs and delegation. I would find the right team members and tools that didn't just lessen my workload, but it really shifted my energy from burnout to feeling more motivated and really excited about, you know, running my business. And in fact of the matter, that's really what helped me kickstart my growth. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't happen overnight. Personally, it took me about 90 days of just systematizing processes and streamlining things, but the payoff is monumental. You see, by prioritizing tasks that truly needed my expertise and then automating or delegating everything else, it really unlocked a new level of productivity and business growth. All right, the next sin is a lack of having clear goals. Now, this is another one that had me spinning my wheels for just way too long. When I started, I really just wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted to buy a big house, I wanted to have a really nice car, and I wanted to fly private. Now, these are really great things to want and have, but these actually weren't very clear goals. See, here's the thing about creating clear goals. Without them, it's basically like navigating without a map. Sure, I'm moving in a direction, but I don't know if that's the right direction or if it's getting me anywhere. And this really hit me hard after a few years when I was just grinding away and it wasn't getting me closer to where I wanted to be. That's when I really and truly learned about SMART goals. You see, SMART, it stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. So the strategy here was every quarter I would create some goals and then I would review and adjust the goals based off of my business's current reality. Like for example, one of the quarterly goals I had was to generate a thousand leads every single month. And I would check the data every single month to see how close I was trending. And then I would make adjustments as needed based off of my monthly check-ins to see if I can get closer to that goal. This is truly just like having Google Maps alerting you and guiding you in which direction you're going so that you're going the right way. And this clarity completely transformed how I work every single day. Things became a heck of a lot more focused and surprisingly less stressful because I knew what needed to get done and by when. And with the help of my team, we can all be aligned with the exact same goals and course correct if we need to. The next sin is misaligned expectations when it comes to branding and personal connection. I was fooled by this really, really early on. I used to think that all my marketing needed to be about my business. So I got a designer to design a really sleek logo, built out a fancy website, and then waited for clients to come in. And when I opened the floodgates, there wasn't any water. This was an honest, really, really painful reality check. And then a mentor of mine sat me down and really laid it into me. He said, people hire people, they don't hire fancy logos. This was the piece that I was missing. My mentor really stressed the importance of weaving in my story, my why, and my humanity into everything I publish. Because it wasn't just about selling my services, it was about connection to my audience at a human level. I shared my struggles, my victories, and of course my values. And I really shifted my content strategy, focused primarily on my story and storytelling. If you really pay attention to all the content I share, it's really about the challenges solopreneurs face, you know, based off of my anecdotes and my personal stories. And I even let my audience in on, you know, personal hobbies and things that I enjoy doing outside of just work. 
This approach did not only just land me a boatload of more clients and a more sustainable and business that actually grows, uh, it also helped me build a community because people started engaging with my content, not just because they were interested in my services, but simply because they saw me as a person that could be a friend that they can trust and they can relate to. And the reality is in a sea flooded with competition, adding some personality and a personal touch really helped me stand out. And it wasn't because I was the loudest or flashiest person because the reality is my videos, the editing, the, the, the quality, it doesn't look that great. The reality is people are drawn to me because I'm sincere. At least I like to hope to think I am. And at the end of the day, just wanna remind you, branding isn't about what something looks like or what your company looks like. It's primarily about how people feel when they see something that you've created when it interacts with them. And that, my friend, is the power of personal connection in brand. Okay, on to the next sin, and that is overlooking client quality. And this is something that took me a little while to realize. Actually, not a little while, a very long time to realize. I honestly thought that more clients meant more success. And the truth is, I was completely wrong. Uh, at the time, I was taking on every single client that I could get, thinking that it was my fastest way to business growth and more revenue. And instead, what ended up happening was I got burnt out and I got really frustrated. And that's because not all clients are created equal. Look, some clients just drained my resources more than they were truly worth. And that's when I realized the importance of aligning with clients who truly value what I have to offer. And this process started with me setting criteria of who exactly I want to work with and focusing on clients who aligned with my personal values and my personal goals. Truth be told, this really meant something painful, saying no to quick cash. But instead, I really focused my time and my attention on long-term partnerships with people that I actually enjoy being around. And the reality, this energizes me. Higher quality clients means less stress and a business that truly reflects my values. And choosing quality over quantity was about preserving my sanity and making sure that my business actually brought me joy instead of just bringing income. And this shift completely overhauled my client roster and changed how I view business. All right, on to the next sin, and this one is way too common. It's not using tech tools that are available to us. See, early in my journey, everything was manual. It was either taking down notes in a digital notepad or it, everything was essentially trapped in my brain. And this is a very, very messy system. And the fact is, this definitely cost me. I would always be forgetting things or losing things. And this led to either a lot of my clients, if not all of them getting upset because I'm dropping the ball or no clients at all because I'm just forgetting to follow up with people. So the breaking point happened when I was completely burnt out and I went down a YouTube rabbit hole looking for solutions. See, here's the thing. I knew there was a bunch of software out there, but I just didn't know how to use it properly. So instead of trying to look for tutorials on how to use these tech tools, I focused my efforts on the systems that people were using to implement these tools. And that small shift turned everything around in a good way. CRMs, they're no longer just a piece of software that I don't know how to use. Automations and scheduling appointments, it's not really a thing anymore. I know what the system looks like now. And project management, oh man, like it's good to know that stuff is getting done without me having to manage or micromanage it. And the main thing here isn't that I was trying to replace everyone on my team. The main thing is that I was using technology to make everything more efficient. And with the right tech stack, I can maintain personal connections with my clients. And reality is I can actually have a leaner team, a smaller group of people that I have to manage because everything's just running more effectively. So the lesson here is to not think about the fancy tool to fix the problem, but instead think about what the system looks like and then find the tool that you can use to implement it. All right, moving on to the next deadly sin. It is isolation. This is something I know way too many solopreneurs including myself early on, really struggle with. Isolation is a huge bottleneck for your business. Listen, I missed out on a ton of feedback, a ton of really great ideas, and the support that I really was looking for when I plateaued and I needed to think bigger. So here's the thing, for the longest time, I really resisted coaching. The idea of joining a mastermind group or seeking some mentorship, in all honesty, I felt like it was a scam. Especially now when you're looking at your maybe Facebook or Instagram feed and all you see are a bunch of coaches like soliciting their service. But when you hit a ceiling, 
and you're looking for a way to break through, this changes everything. This is when I realized that growth isn't just about what you know, but also about who you know that's been where you are so they can get you past where you are faster. Huh? So I took the plunge. I joined a few groups. I reached out to people and I paid for some really, really expensive coaching. But the reality is these groups became my sounding board to my motivation. And in many cases, the reason why I dug myself out of setbacks a heck of a lot faster if I was trying to do this on my own. And to be honest, many of the people I met in these groups are really, really great friends today. So just remember, as a solopreneur, you don't have to do this alone. Your pride is actually what's stopping you from growing. So reach out, stop isolating yourself, and trust me, it will be a complete game changer for you. By the way, if you found this video helpful so far, I'll really appreciate it if you can hit that like button, the subscribe button, the bell icon, all that good stuff. Thank you so much in advance. All right, the next sin is the deadliest, by far the deadliest. It is called imposter syndrome. And for years, even as my business started to gain traction, there was this nagging voice inside of my head. It said things like, who am I to do this? Or I can't make it. Or it's time to get a nine to five because I don't have what it takes. Does this sound familiar? Well, imposter syndrome had me doubting my achievements and fearing like I'd be exposed as a fraud. And ignoring imposter syndrome isn't an option. All that happens is it's just it gets louder in your head. So here's how I tackled it. Firstly, I acknowledged it. Then I started journaling my successes, no matter how small, every single day right before I went to sleep. I would jot down three wins into my cool little journaling app. And then I would use this as evidence, as actual proof to show my doubts. And the next thing I did was embrace vulnerability. This is super important. I share my fears. The reality is everyone deals with the exact same thoughts that I have. And and the funny part is when I started sharing this, I found out that this one topic is something that everyone can relate to. This is by far the one topic with all of the content that I share that has the most views, the most engagement, the most likes. And I also want to add that a mentor also reminded me that growth comes when we push ourselves past our comfort zone. And if you're looking for a KPI or key performance indicator of what that comfort zone looks like when you're pushing by it and you're kind of tapping it, well, really, it's that voice inside of your head saying that you can't do it. And now whenever I hear that voice, I know that, hey, guess what? I'm going in the right direction and I just need to tell it to shut the heck up. Now, the final piece to defeating imposter syndrome, it's adopting a beginner's mindset. So instead of fearing that I don't know everything, I became excited with what I can learn next. It's really about being super duper curious. I should say that imposter syndrome, it's still there. It hasn't vanished, but now it doesn't really control me. It's just a reminder to me that, hey, whenever I hear it or feel it, I'm pushing towards something and I'm evolving. Now study this video so you can avoid these sins on your journey.